Welcome back to Brickmania TV. What do you mean, welcome back? What do you mean, welcome back? This Today on it's Brickmania. a new episode. Welcome to Brickmania. Welcome. Welcome to Brickmania TV. <laughs> I, think I, I think we got it. Today on Brickmania TV, we have Big Bertha. Dan, tell us about it. Okay, Big Bertha. <laughs> it's yeah. a generic name um, used to describe, you know, by, usually by the other side, to describe uh, any large caliber German gun. World War One, World War Two, but its origins are specifically with this gun here. Cool. So this is earlier. This is what time in the war would we see this? Well, this is World War One, um, and this these things were actually made in secrecy uh, before World War One. So you have to remember, Europe has been it's it's a it's a it's a bunch of kingdoms. Right. And what do kingdoms have? They have fortresses, kings, castles, whatever. Um, so. Throughout the, the you know the the centuries, Europe has been getting had bigger and bigger fortifications, uh, bigger bigger guns to defeat them. So prior to World War One, um, particularly like in Belgium, the frontier, there were these large forts that were designed to protect Belgium basically from the invading Germans, right. or the, protect France from the invading Germans, and vice versa. So this is all over Europe. So in great secrecy. Part of the war plan, uh, if, it, if it ever came to a war between France and, and, and Germany, um, was that the Germans needed to get into France. In order to get into France, it had to go through a whole bunch of fortified territories. One of these was uh, the Belgian frontier, uh, kind of the back door to France. Um, so the German uh, high command came up with this plan of making these gigantic bunker-busting uh, mortars. It's a howitzer, basically, but it shoots a, shoots a shell Weighs almost two thousand pounds. It's right. Yeah, it's, that's, it's that's compared scale, compared yeah. to a guy. Yeah, that's that's accurate. Massive. Sixteen bigger than the sixteen-inch guns that were. Uh, it's wider diameter than the sixteen-inch guns on the on the battleship. Uh, um, you know, like the Missouri or oh. World War II battleships. Huge. huge gun could shoot the shell like seven miles. Range wasn't really the issue though. These 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 were designed to hurl a shell high up, arcing into the sky, where it come crashing down through the earth penetrate into a concrete bunker and basically blow up the fort that's right. buried underneath uh, and you know in the frontier. So that's what these are designed for. So prior to World War I, these guns, they were made designed by Krupp, German manufacturer. They're, they're famous. They, they've been building guns for as long as anybody can remember, <laughs> since before guns were invented. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> yes. So anyway, they, uh, so they built these guns. Um, they disguised them. They called them, uh, it was like called Article M. They called it a marine cannon. They were trying to disguise this thing, the, the true intention of this gun. Um, basically, it's a giant naval gun on a rolling, you can see wheels on here. This is a road mobile uh, gigantic howitzer. Right. And they, they built these things in secrecy, dragged them to the, to the Belgian frontier. And when World War I started, they basically already had these guns Ready on the go. frontier. Um, decided that the, 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 the German plan was if there was a war between France and Germany that they would go through Belgium, bypass sure. all of the French defenses that they had built up on the border, and come around to the back door. So protecting the Belgian frontier were these gigantic fortresses that protected the valleys, the cities in Belgium. Yeah. And uh, the Germans basically systematically destroyed these fortresses. So incredibly them. effective. Yeah, these yeah. guns were out of the range of direct fire of the fort's own defensive guns. And we just launched these shells high up in the sky. They hit one fort. First shot hit the uh, magazine, blew the whole entire fort up, wow. um, without a loss of a single German life. You know, so they meant business. Um, the shell. I mean, basically, I mean, I could show you how the, the mechanics of this gun. Yeah, worked. let's get right into the kit. So cool. when they when they transfer these guns to the front, they they had to break it down. This thing yeah. is so so massive that they took these gigantic steam tractors. Would be cool if I made one, but I haven't had time to do it. Next year. Yeah, next year. Um, they basically take like five loads. The barrel would be separate load, which actually, this, in this case, this actually comes out. Uh, this actually works realistically the way the real, the real thing would be Ooh, made. Yeah. So you can, you can put the shield back. That's cool. You can take the gun out. Um, I'm not going to, well, I'll take it, it out. It. Yeah, sure. We'll break it for you. If it breaks, you can just cut it out. Yeah, well, it'll break. Oh, it's perfectly simple. So the kind of the cool thing about this gun 
it's so big, I was actually able to make a lot of working components on it. So we can actually, we have the, the geared tooth. To yeah, it's got a little ratcheting mechanism. Yeah, we can raise it and lower it through here. Awesome. Um, one of the coolest things is the sliding breech. All, pretty much all Krupp guns, um, it was one of their trademarks, was they had a sliding breech, sliding block. You see these like, you know, World War I cannons, World yeah. War II cannons, uh, the 88, all these guns, they all have a sliding breech, which basically means the breech block slides, you slide this thing over, uh, then you can load the shell in, and then you slide, you know, ham hammer the, 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 the breech home. You could do this in here, problem is you get it stuck and you never yeah. be able to get the shell out. Uh, or have to take the gun apart to get the shell sure. out. Um, but the sliding breech block uh, actually works. Um, you can load it, basically load the gun in here, pull this off just to make it easier to get in on the... So they'd fold okay. that whole the, the shield down. Yeah, this is part of when they built it. It's kind of cool because there are, there's a website, we'll put the URL up, cool. um, that shows how they assembled this thing. Uh, it's massive. Yeah. Um, they have this, they, they get the shell basically hoisted up on this crane uh, off of a donkey cart or whatever they're, they're hauling it in. Um, put the shell on the, on the tray, haul it up with a little crane, which actually works on this and thing. This is like a team of like, how many guys? Uh, like dozens. Yeah. So uh, there's a picture, it's a great picture up on, the, on this, this website, we'll put the URL up. It's, it's all about how they built these guns and how they moved yeah. it. So they'll have like 10 guys on this platform, they'll ram the shell home into the, into the breach. And you got, there's a platform on this side of the, of the gun. Um, right here, where the gunner would actually be standing. So platform here, and he's got fine, fine controls of the elevation and stuff for the gun. But it's kind of cool, they actually had, this thing was so big that they had a, a team of guys that would, you'd have a, they'd be running this winch here. Oh, so there, that actually was a real winch at the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah, it's this crank, I, I didn't make it, they have two guys, each, <laughs> each one guy on each side of the crank, and they're right, cranking cool. the gun up by hand. And the gunner stands here, he has fine controls, yeah. he's got all of his uh, sextants and, 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 and uh, whatever they use to, to yeah. determine the fire, you know, the rate, you know, the elevation and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, that's all real. Um, that's cool. So he'd be here, these guys would be loading it, it'd be officers all over, it's this huge operation. And if they needed Bad. to traverse, so they actually buried the spade, this is a spade back, they yep. buried into the ground, this thing goes into the ground like three feet, and it's designed to absorb the recoil of the gun. Bad. There is huge compensators on here. Um, that will ex absorb the recoil, but just to keep this gun in place, so they don't have to keep right. reseating it. it. This tail is buried in the ground. As you can see, it actually works the way it's supposed to. So they get some sort of traverse, yeah. a limited amount of traverse, just by, by one guy back here, a couple guys. I don't know. It's a huge ship's wheel. You see the pictures yeah. of it. The, the thing's massive. It's just like a cannon, you know, like your typical cannon, yeah. built on a massive scale. That's so cool. <laughs> so, so during World War One, they wheeled these things over to the, the Belgian frontier destroyed the, the, like three or four different forts that were guarding the frontier. Right. And then they continued to use these guns during you know, the, the campaigns, uh, various campaigns, both in the Eastern, Eastern Front and the Western Front. Yeah. So you know, Germany did fight on both fronts in, in, in World War I as well. Um, and it's kind of, you know, inter it's, it, it, it's the, the fate of these guns, they built like 12 of them during the course, before and during the course of World War I. Right. Not a single gun that was used in combat survived. Apparently they had uh, issues with the shell quality and, and almost every one of these guns eventually blew up. Blew up yeah. Killed all the operators <laughs> conceivably. <laughs> so you see a lot of pictures of them that are completely destroyed. Um, That's really terrible. So yeah, so, so, <laughs> being, odds there. so, so being in artillery, uh, op, well, nobody knew at the time. So. <laughs> They've never built anything that big. At the time, was it the biggest gun? Um, it was for a while. So this is a 42 centimeter. It's like over 16 inches sure. in diameter. Um, they did build bigger. They, they, did, they did other guns too. So there's, this is a, it's, it's 42 centimeters. It's a relatively short barrel. It's, it's designed to lob a big right. shell, not very far. They did do a bigger, longer rifled version of this um, that could shoot a shell much further. It was a smaller shell. And then of course they did some bi even bigger guns like railway guns, stuff like yeah. that. Um, and the, the biggest one they did was called the, the Paris gun, which could shoot a shell like, it was miles. Yeah. It, 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 it skimmed across the atmosphere and, and you know, conceivably, they could they could shoot the shell from be set this gun up behind the lines and you know behind the trenches in, in World War One and land shells in Paris. Who knows what the accuracy is? I don't, it's doubtful it did any kind of significant yeah. damage. Uh, whereas this one is documented. It, yeah. it did they did a great amount of damage with these guns. Wow, I think you knocked it out of the park with this model. It looks really awesome and tons of cool play features on it. So. <laughs> there is. You do get one guy. Yep, one we, guy. we did put a little we did put a little fire Front office fire control back officer printing. So yep, he's our um, our German uh, World War One German. This is kind of an early war guy. Yep. Um, we are going to be selling when this comes out. This will be the kind of 
we'll have other, you know, if you wanted to get your whole like 30 man crew, you could certainly do that because we are going to be selling the, the figures. We've been gearing up. Uh, Great War Month has been, uh, it's been, we've been getting a huge amount of response. So, surprising. We've done World War One stuff in the past and um, we've had mixed results. Sure. Yeah. Cool models and certain video games maybe uh, making it more popular. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 we're, yeah, we'll, we're not complaining. Cool. Well, I don't know. I think everyone's excited for this thing to come out. And yeah. I am too. It's going to be fun. <laughs> cool. We'll be able to lob shells at your neighbor. Maybe. I don't know. Does it actually fire? I don't think. <laughs> Little spring loaded cannon. No, it doesn't. No. Fire. Next time, next year. Spring loaded cannon, right? You could, but we should have. Oh, next yeah. year. Next year. All right. Thank you very much <laughs> for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for future episodes. Thank you.